Hi everybody, Jonathan here, and today we're going to be looking at an interesting tutorial to take your Vectorworks models into SketchUp. Now, as you know, SketchUp goes into Vectorworks really, really well, but often I do get asked by people if they can import their Vectorworks models into SketchUp for various reasons. So I really want to show you how this works. It actually works extremely well. We've got a couple of tricks to reveal along the way, and I think you'll be blown away with the comparison between Vectorworks and SketchUp. So please make sure you watch to the end. You'll definitely see some enlightening progress as we make this tutorial happen. Thanks for watching everybody. Let's get started with the tutorial. Okay, so for this particular tutorial, I'm going to work with an eco home that I designed a number of years ago that we got planning permission for, which was a project that I was really, really proud of. So as you can see, the project was designed, modeled and visualized uh, completely in Vectorworks. And all I'm really doing here is just running through a couple of the settings on Vectorworks, just so you can kind of see the kind of level of quality of visuals and sort of images that I'm able to get in real time, just spinning around with my Vectorworks model. So a few little tips here that I've given out before on my other videos, so make sure you watch those. Things like ambient occlusion, uh, reflectivity, environmental reflections, just tuning up the lighting, that kind of thing. One of the really great things with Vectorworks is that the uh, shaded rendering is actually extremely good and basically even with sort of things like reflections, um, nice transparency, textures and materials, you know, the model is very, very responsive. So what I'm going to do now is go up to the view menu and set a Renderworks background, which is something I don't do that often, but you can see that if I do with the things like the reflections on, I get these really nice uh, reflections of the sky and the clouds and really kind of quite nice lighting in my model. Um, I've actually got the site in another file so this file is literally just the building model that I reference into the site so let's go ahead we're going to export this as an FBX file in order to get into SketchUp okay and that's the very first stage now I know some of you are thinking well SketchUp doesn't import FBX files okay so we've got a little trick up our sleeves as to how we're going to get this into SketchUp so well so we've exported our FBX file Let's save our file. Now, wonderful bit of software that I'm now going to open up is called Transmuter. So you can see it here, Transmuter. It's a really fantastic bit of software by Lindale and it's quite cost effective. If you're ever using uh, SketchUp at all, you're gonna want to get this software because it has a huge range of import functionalities. And you can see that I can basically just go ahead, bring in my exported FBX file, which is about 155 megabytes and basically import it into Transmuter. And it takes a few moments, um, depending on the file size, but actually when it lands, uh, let's just fit to the model. Sometimes actually you do need to just flip over the Z value so that you get the model standing up right. But as you can see, that's actually worked out pretty well. And all the textures have come through as well. So this is gonna enable us basically to transmute this and save it as a SketchUp file really, really easily. Now there's lots of other controls if you do want to go into more depth with Transmuter. And you'll notice that you can actually change things like all the materials, reflectivity, and all these things as well to tune those up. But other than that, you know, there's lots of different settings and the license is very, very cost effective. I think you can get a trial as well. And make sure you please use my affiliate link if you would like to purchase a license. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click Transmute. So what this will now do is basically convert it into a SketchUp file, which of course, after a few minutes of exporting, we can now read ready to import. So the file size is a bit larger um, for the SketchUp file, but that's okay. We could actually reduce that file size using Transmuter if we needed to. So I'm gonna go ahead and import it into SketchUp. Okay, so here is the uh, model of my eco home imported into SketchUp and actually, honestly, at first glance, um, I was a bit confused whether this was SketchUp or Vectorworks. So it looks really, really good. Um, it's come through really, really nicely. The geometry looks really, really perfect and the materials have also come through. So the good thing obviously with SketchUp is you can always turn off the materials and strip it back if you want to. And with various sort of settings, you can kind of play around. Now, you know, I've always found 
SketchUp to be a really nice bit of software and widely used in the industry. But you know, look, because I'm such a Vectorworks fanatic and I really love Vectorworks, I'm gonna sort of be honest with you and say that I don't use SketchUp that much these days. So when I kind of come to it, I actually find um, things like the navigation a little bit awkward. One thing that I really miss from Vectorworks is the ability to um, basically spin around a selected vertex on the model. That's definitely something I found that I've missed. Um, and also things like the translate tool. Um, I really find that that in the Vectorworks walkthrough tool means that you can spin around, move forward and backwards and translate as well. But anyway, here we are. We are looking at our model in SketchUp. Um, I'm just kind of exploring a couple of things. I want to set up a couple of save views. So in Vectorworks, um, they're called Save Views. Of course, in SketchUp, they're called Scenes. So we've got the Scenes panel. I'm basically clicking Save Scene. Um, SketchUp is being a little bit unresponsive with my model, but that could be down to the larger file size and the fact that I've got an absolute ton of detail inside the model with things like furniture as well. So now basically in SketchUp, you'll see that I'm just playing around with things like the shadows as well. Um, and I noticed that again, you know, while you can change the shadows, they're not that smooth when you're revolving them around. And I would expect to see them being a bit smoother. Certainly there would be in Vectorworks if I was manipulating the Heliodon. Anyway, look, we've managed to set up a couple of save views. Let's pan the view around. And um, when I'm actually revolving with the Orbit tool, it seems quite responsive. But for some reason, when I click onto the save scene uh, setting, it does take a little while to actually save the scene itself. So not quite as responsive as Vectorworks would be, for sure, for setting up my views. Okay, so we're doing okay though, you know, for someone who doesn't use SketchUp all that often, um, I'm certainly able to manipulate the model and it looks really, really good with all the textures. And I'm also able to set up my different scenes, turn shadows on and off, as well as manage things like the textures really, really well. So I think what we'll now do is let's get our orbit tool and basically orbit around. So I'm basically going to select my orbit tool. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I do find some of the um, sort of SketchUp interface a little bit confusing. Again, this is probably just down to my lack of experience compared to Vectorworks. Um, but let me know what you think in the comments. Um, are you a real SketchUp lover? Or do you just find uh, that some of the interface is a little bit sort of dated and as it's always been? Now I know that I can customize the interface in SketchUp and I've been doing this sort of over the years to make life a bit easier. But I would like to see things like pop up. So when I hover over the tool, it would tell me the keyboard shortcut, for example, and the name of the tool. That would actually be really nice. So honestly, SketchUp, I think it's time that you introduce some of these features into the software to make it, you know, a bit easier for those people who don't use it very often or are new to the software. Okay, so another thing that I really want to do here is try and set some internal views up. And you can see, uh, to be honest, <laughs> I was actually struggling a little bit at this stage to kind of get an effective walking through tool and actually get into the model. So I think I was crashing into some geometry and not able to actually kind of get inside. So by using the zoom tool, it just wasn't that easy. Okay, so what I'm now gonna do is let's try a new uh, different approach. So I'm gonna get my orbit tool and you'll notice again, I'm really kind of struggling in SketchUp to orbit around a selected point. So sometimes it can be a little bit um, of a faff to actually kind of rotate around the actual vertex you're looking for. Okay, so we're going to go to uh, the outliner now. Um, and the, obviously, with the good thing with the outliner is I can bring this down and I can open up the sort of hierarchy, if you like. And now what's really nice is my Vectorwitz layers have actually come through really, really nicely. So this is a real bonus, the fact that it's been into Transmuter. My layering is completely intact. And you'll notice that I can just go and revolve around, turn off the various layers. You can see I'm still struggling a little bit with the various sort of navigation in SketchUp. But look, let me know, is this just me or does everybody find this a little bit tricky sometimes with uh, SketchUp? So let's turn off the first floor as well. Okay, so now we can kind of get ourselves down into the model, hopefully. So what I'm actually going to do is use the uh, little guy here to sort of try and get down to eye level. And again, um, if this was in Vectorworks, I would definitely just pop a camera in. But I'm struggling to kind of find the right kind of tool to get myself down completely at that eye level and actually give myself, you know, an exact eye height. But there we go. Okay, we've managed to get down inside now. So I think what I can now do is basically turn my other layers on and navigate around. So I'm just gonna kind of finish navigating and try and set up a nice shot of the kitchen. Let's turn the other layer on. 
Again, um, this is an observation, not a criticism, but you know, because of the level of complexity in my model, what I'm noticing is um, a little bit of a kind of lag moving around, but also definitely a lag when I do things like turn layers on and off. And I honestly just do not find that in Vectorworks uh, at all. So if this is something that other people experience, please do let me know. Again, it could well be down to the complexity and the size of that model. You can see there's lots of curved geometry, and I know, you know, SketchUp doesn't really like curved geometry uh, that much and that it kind of tends to facet everything. Those sort of glasses and the cups and detail of things on the table, things like that kettle, uh, probably kind of make it a little bit more kind of complex uh, for the SketchUp to calculate the geometry. Anyway, you'll see that I'm able to uh, basically turn my shadows on and off. I was hoping to see if I could adjust the shadow time so that I could actually get the light coming through the, uh, the, the windows or doors into the project. But unfortunately, you know, that isn't that easy because I can't revolve the north point. And that's something that in Vectorwitz I do all the time. Using the Heliodon, I often cheat just to get light coming through the windows. And again, if you set, you know, a fairly low sun angle in maybe December, for example, that means that you can actually kind of get that sun streaming through the doors or the windows. But, you know, I'll be honest with you, I wasn't able to achieve that very nicely in SketchUp. So that was something that in Vectorworks would be dead easy to do. Still, you know, the model has imported pretty nicely and I am impressed with the level of detail and the fact that this has come from Vectorworks via Transmuter and now we're able to navigate around using SketchUp and again, for those people who are familiar with SketchUp, this will work really, really well for them. Now, I do think that we have got this collision because I can see that I'm kind of getting stuck as I try and navigate around using this sort of uh, walkthrough mode, if you like. And it looks like I'm bashing into things and getting a bit stuck as well. Uh, Vectorworks has that option if you need it, but you can also turn collision off, which is very useful. It means that you can walk through doors or kind of through walls as well. Okay, so, you know, I'm doing okay. For someone who's not used SketchUp for a little while, I'm gonna set up another save view inside. And again, there's a bit of a lag here as we do this. Obviously it's um, saving some geometry or something for that save view. Not quite sure why that would be. Um, definitely a little bit less responsive than I would say Vectorworks would be for me to do this particular operation. Now, what I thought I'd do is save the model and I would actually like to go back to Vectorworks for a second and just get it, you know, shut down and also shut down Transmuter and any other software so that I can really get a feel for the performance of SketchUp. But just before we do this, I'm just gonna kind of review my save views or should we say scenes in SketchUp by double clicking them and then I can uh, revert back. Okay, so here we are now back in Vectorworks. Now, you can see, uh, you know, my first impression having seen the SketchUp model is it definitely does look nicer in Vectorworks, I'm not gonna lie. I'll let you make your own decisions and your own uh, opinions, but look, for me, those reflections, transparency, uh, things like the shadowing, and maybe the materials look a bit nicer. Um, it certainly feels a bit more responsive in the walkthrough mode in real time as well. So um, one other thing I love about Vectorworks is the fact I can go to auto hide my palettes and basically just sort of walk around uh, with everything hidden away. As you say, there's no clash detection unless I actually do turn that on in the gaming mode. And I can freely navigate around and very easily sort of set up those views. So this was a really interesting little uh, enlightening example for me to do, you know, similar save views that I was just trying to do a moment ago in SketchUp and just sort of see, to be honest, how much faster this would be in Vectorworks. Now, honestly, you know, I really do think SketchUp is a wonderful tool. It's revolutionized the 3D industry by making it sort of aware that everybody can get SketchUp as a student and use it. And it's fairly cost effective, to be honest. Easy to learn on one level, but, you know, for me, I've always found it a little bit frustrating uh, once I get into really complicated and detailed models, particularly if I'm trying to do, you know, multiple floors rather than just one space, and particularly if I'm trying to add a lot of detail inside. So within that little time I've been talking, you'll notice that I've now set up uh, three or four different save views in Vectorworks, and all I need to do to animate between them is simply double click, and I can basically set up a nice little animated sequence which you can adjust the timings. So for me, I'm gonna to have to say that Vectorworks save views definitely beat the scenes in SketchUp. 
So what I've done is basically quit Vectworks and Transmuter now. I've quit iMovie and I've basically quit all the software because I wanted to see if SketchUp will be a bit more responsive, if it has a bit more memory. And maybe it is actually, maybe it's going a little, little bit quicker. But you know, to be honest, I'm still finding it a little bit less responsive than Vectorworks would be just for manipulating around the view. And look, I definitely think nobody can argue that if you compare this view inside with the Vectorworks view where I've got lighting, shadows, reflections, glass, you know, the Vectorworks realism is a lot more, you know, a lot further advanced than the basic SketchUp. I know that with SketchUp, obviously you can drop lots of other rendering software like um, Enscape or Twinmotion, maybe V-Ray on top, but you know, you do have to use those. The great thing with Vectorworks is that in a way you don't have to use those until you get to the final, final kind of icing on the cake renders that you need. Um, and basically you can move around in real time with really nice level of quality these days in Vectorworks. So, you know, I have enjoyed making this little tutorial. It's definitely something I'm gonna do a bit more of because I know uh, many, many of my clients all over the world use SketchUp, but I would love to try and encourage more of you to look at how you could use Vectorworks if that's software that you're already using for your drawings and the design process, rather than modeling in SketchUp, you know, let's learn to model in Vectorworks. And that is definitely something that you can do for my channel, or if you reach out to me for one-to-one -one training or group training, I would love to help with that too. So I guess I'm on a mission really, to maybe convert some of you SketchUp users over to using Vectorworks, if that's your 2D design software. Otherwise you're always sort of making the model uh, as well as doing the drawings. So with Vectorworks, we can make a model, get all our drawings, and that's all we need to do. Well, everybody, I do hope you enjoyed this tutorial looking at how to take your Vectorworks models into SketchUp. I'll also be doing one on how to go from SketchUp into Vectorworks, which is actually really easy and works really, really well too. So the, the great thing is because a lot of you Vectorworks users do use SketchUp, I want you to see how easy it is to interchange the information between them. But ultimately, I would love for you to learn a bit more Vectorworks 3D modeling. And if that's something I can inspire to you to do, I'll be very, very happy indeed. So thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.